Goosebumps is rated GB7 because it may be too spooky for children under seven. Imagine you're a kid in the 90s. You go to your local library, hoping to find something to read while you eat some fruit roll-ups and drink a Kool-Aid jammer. You look around the library and can't find anything, so you go up to the librarian's desk. And you ask her, do you have any good scary books for kids? She points you in just the direction of the books you're looking for. But one makes you stop. It intrigues you. The cover is a house with purple and red lighting. It says, Welcome to Dead House on the bottom. But it's the top of the cover that intrigues you more. Goosebumps, it reads in a slime logo. Little do you know, that book, from the moment you read it, would become a very popular franchise spawning books, movies, TV shows, board games, video games, and all sorts of merchandise. Little did you know, that book would once become synonymous with childhood fear. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, spooks and spirits, viewer beware, you're in for a scare. Welcome to Goosebumps, the beginning, the middle, and the twist. Now, in order to start talking about Goosebumps, we have to talk about someone in particular. The author. The mastermind of all children's fears. The Stephen King of children's horror. R.L. Stein. Hello, I'm R.L. Stein. I write the Goosebumps books. The man himself, Robert Lawrence Stein, also known as R.L. Stein and Jovial Bob Stein. He was mostly a humor book writer. However, one day he met with an editor, and at lunch he said, I bet you could write a scary children's book. Not just children's, teenage horror book. And Stein got to work right away, penning his first horror novel, Blind Date. Featuring some of the tropes that Stein would later use, Blind Date was a success causing him to go ahead and write the more teen-oriented Fear Street series, which got a movie in 2021. Books would sell well, and in the light of this, Stein would be asked his most challenging question yet, to write horror for 7 to 11 year olds, thus creating Welcome to Dead House. Welcome to Dead House featured some of the scares that Stein would be known for, although in recent years he's been saying it might be too scary for children. However, that would not stop children, just not right away. You see, until book six, Let's Get Invisible, Goosebumps wouldn't really be picked up. After book six, though, out of nowhere, children started reading the book, and they loved it, thus creating the media juggernaut that is Goosebumps, and thus leading into another part of its chapter. 
Welcome to Dead House would sell over 50,000 copies, as well as the second book, Stay Out of the Basement. Whereas the third book in the series, Monster Blood, would sell over 100,000 copies. It was clear that the 90s were the decade of goosebumps, and eventually a new part of the franchise would appear from the ether. Give Yourself Goosebumps was a choose your own adventure series with the same goosebumps tropes. I actually own a few of the books in the series and they are a lot of fun with a bunch of different spooky endings. However, before he published the first Give Yourself Goosebumps book, Stein would publish a book with a few short stories he wrote called Tales to Give You Goosebumps. Tales was yet another success for the franchise, starting in 1994, just a year before Give Yourself Goosebumps. The first book and its subsequent books would introduce a new mascot for the Goosebumps brand, Curly the Skeleton. Curly is the Goosebumps appointed mascot, and is obviously a skeleton. He sported a purple mohawk, sunglasses, and a red tie, or scarf, and he often is seen with his pet bulldog, Drool very popular among Goosebumps fans. He would even appear on clothes, toys, merchandise, advertisements, and even on the cover of books. But he sported a different look from his normal appearance in the book covers of Tales to Give You Goosebumps, appearing with a white mohawk instead of purple. Eventually, with the franchise growing bigger, there would of course be merchandise with the Goosebumps name attached. Things like Halloween costumes, toys, clothes, and even trading cards would soon sport the Goosebumps name. One of my personal favorites when it comes to early Goosebumps merchandise is the Goosebumps Haunted Mask replica from Trick or Treat Studios. You will be mine someday. Oh yes, you will be mine. At this point, you may be wondering about one piece of Goosebumps media that is very well known and very beloved by fans around the world. You may be thinking, sure, the books are cool, but what if I wanted to see the books come to life before my very eyes? Well, ladies and gentlemen, ghouls and goblins, ghosts and zombies, spooks and spirits, I'm going to take you back to the year 1995, the year this ad showed up on TVs around the world. in an all-new Fox Kids television series. Things are not always what they appear to be. Uh, on Goosebumps, premiering November 3rd on Fox Kids, watch it with a friend. <laughs> yes, that's right, folks. If you were a kid in 1995 through 1998, you may remember a TV show. A TV show so awesomely scary that aired on one of the most popular kids' networks ever to grace the screens of our TVs. No, not you. There, that's better. It's the Goosebumps TV show. It started off with a bang in 1995 with the premiere of its first episode, The Haunted Mask. It premiered on Fox Kids with the Creep Keeper himself hosting the whole thing. There were people all over the nation tuning in to scare their socks off and get a few laughs. The show would be on Fox Kids and YTV the entirety of its four seasons, being a rating smash hit for the showrunners, with episodes based on classic books like Monster Blood and One Day at Horrorland, and even some short stories from the Tales to Give You Goosebumps series, like Strained Peas and An Old Story. While most of the episodes weren't as scary as their written counterparts, the show did an awesome job of adapting the stories for the screen. I personally own a few episodes, and as research for this documentary, I broke them out and to relive my childhood nostalgia. At one point, I owned all of the original 62 Goosebumps books as well as some spin-offs of the books. I also owned something that fans were always looking forward to, Goosebumps Games. I personally own the first Goosebumps board game, called Terran the Graveyard Game, and I can remember how fun it was. However, one game that I have always sought after was a computer game 
called Escape from Horrorland. is fondly remembered by fans and was displayed in a video by one of my favorite YouTubers who covers children's horror often, Pushing Up Roses. I recommend you check out her channel if you're looking for a fun comedy YouTuber who does videos on more nostalgic topics and TV shows. I will leave her channel in the description. Back to Goosebumps. With more pressure on R.L. Stein's shoulders to release new books, Stress was mounting up on his publishers, and soon news would break out of a lawsuit against Stein, claiming he was hiring ghostwriters for the main series of books, which, if true, was against his contract. Stein would deny the ghostwriters, and his marketers at Parachute Press would countersue. In the middle of all this, Stein would host multiple Write Your Own Goosebumps book contests, resulting in some of the books that have been lost to time, with titles like Slime Doesn't Pay and Dead Dogs Still Fetch. However, one would make it to print, and would be published in the next chapter of the original run of Goosebumps. It's not in your closet. It's not under your bed. It's coming for you. The best-selling book series is getting scarier. Goosebumps Series 2000 Featuring multiple books filled with the same old Goosebumps story structure, Series 2000 was a way to try and revitalize the series, or it would be for an older audience, mostly of teenagers. These stories would include some of the legacy Goosebumps monsters such as Slappy and the Horrorland Horrors. The series would also include one of Stein's personal favorite stories that he's written, Brain Juice. However, sadly, in 1998, the Goosebumps TV show would get the axe, leaving many children disappointed. And even worse, with Stein's contract with Scholastic running out, it would not be renewed. It was a dark time for Goosebumps, with no new books coming out, and the TV show only being ran on reruns, and the merchandise becoming scarce. This would have been the end of this documentary if I would have been around in the 90s. Goosebumps would have ended and just became a thing of the past. But then again, you need to remember, this is Goosebumps we're talking about. It would be silly if Stein didn't want to continue the series, especially with 90s nostalgia coming to a head in the 2000s. Early in the year 2000, Tim Jacobus, the original cover artist for all of the Goosebumps books, would announce a partnership between Stein and HarperCollins book publisher. A new Goosebumps series would be announced, Goosebumps Gold, which would have had books with titles like The Haunted Mask Lives, Happy Holidays from Dead House, and Slappy New Year. Notice that I said would have. Goosebumps Gold was never published. In fact, most of the books planned to be in the series would not see the light of day. And with no news from Stein, Goosebumps Gold was silently cancelled, bringing an end to the Goosebumps series. Or did it? Yes, for a while it seemed like Goosebumps would just be stuck with the re-releases of the original series. However, in 2008, something amazing happened with the release of a game called Goosebumps Horrorland, a game for the Wii, DS, and PS2. Prepare for a case of the chills, the willies, the heebie-jeebies, the boogity woogies Prepare for Goosebumps Horrorland, the video game. Experience your own Goosebumps adventure 
in an all-new story as you try to escape from a frightening amusement park. Make your way through five different themed areas of the park. Discover, unlock, and play 30 games. And if you can make it to the end, you're in for a shocking surprise. Jump into the all-new Goosebumps adventure. Tickets, please. This game would bring us to the scariest place on Earth, with multiple mini-games and sections of the park based on the Goosebumps series. However, a mysterious new post on a Goosebumps fan board would give some people hope that there would be a new book series, with the spec title being Revenge of the Living Dummy. People would go crazy making theories of what it could mean. Finally, in 2008, the fans would be rewarded for their patience with the newest line of Goosebumps books. Come families, come friends, to a place that's grand. For fun and for thrills, visit Horrorland. With twists and turns and flips and spins, our rides are a riot, so strap yourself in. If your tummy is grumpy, please don't be shy. We've got oodles of tasty treats to try. So come for adventure and fantasy too. Your Horrorland friends will be waiting for you. Goosebumps Horrorland. With stories that had titles reflective of the original 62 Goosebumps books, Horrorland was something that you had to be there to experience, to be honest. It, with multiple websites to help the characters in the books escape Horrorland, puzzles and other fun ways to make the stories very interactive, the new revival of Goosebumps was a hit, and Scholastic would profit greatly, leading them into the next Goosebumps series, which was a spin-off of Horrorland at first, but eventually would drop the Horrorland title called Goosebumps Hall of Horrors. Hall of Horrors would have extensions from Horrorland, as well as Horrorland getting special holiday themed books. Then in 2012, Goosebumps would have a new series sprung from the book Goosebumps Wanted. Goosebumps Wanted would feature a new story with the haunted mask and would lead us into the new series Goosebumps Most Wanted. Goosebumps Most Wanted would star the franchise's most wanted monsters, with covers that kinda looked like mugshots, and I think that was the intention. Most Wanted would be released in 2012 and finish in 2016. However, in 2015, an announcement would be made about Goosebumps entering a new medium, one that has been begged for by fans for years. Goosebumps The Motion Picture Mom, are you positive that there weren't any other places looking for vice principals? You promise you'll give it a shot? I promise. And I looked into it legally. I can't live on my own until I'm 18. So you're the new neighbor? Yeah, I'm Zach, by the way. I'm Hannah. Hannah, get away from the window now. I gotta go. Hi. Hey, we're just moving in. You see that fence? Uh, yes. Stay on your side of it. He's a big teddy bear. Don't take it personally. He doesn't really like anyone. But yeah. Oh, Hannah's in trouble. Oh, who's Hannah? She's locked in this house, and her dad's a psychopath. Oh! Does she have a friend? Whoa, the abominable snowman of Pasadena? These are all Goosebumps manuscripts. Why are these books locked? Did you unlock a book? Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'll put it back where it belongs. Look, here it is. I'll... No, don't open it! <laughs> I've ever created. What was that? It's the invisible boy. Ow! Uh, he is such a cracker. I'm so alive. 
only way to stop them is to suck them back into the books. You read them all, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we know their weaknesses, ah. we can capture them all. We're the only ones who can do this. Ah. Oh, my God, how'd you do that? Sore feelings. I have a ton of cavities. When I was 10, I didn't brush my teeth for a whole year. Uh... All right, everyone, find anything you can to barricade the doors. We cannot let the monsters inside. I just want to break the rules. Come on, scaredy cat. Gnomes? Maybe they're friendly. Oh. Not friendly. Definitely not friendly. Goosebumps the movie would be teased by Slappy the Dummy himself, counting down the movie event that was so cool, it's scary. Months went on, we received multiple updates and even promo photos from the greatest monsters to show up on Pulp, leading to the newest update in the form of books based on the Goosebumps movie. With more pressure mounting up on the publisher to get the Goosebumps movie out, fans would beg for more, and eventually there would be multiple experiences where you could go see Goosebumps. In real life. Goosebumps Alive was a very interesting experience that sadly is not around anymore, but when it was, it was the all-new R-rated Goosebumps experience, where you could see the monsters come to life. It was basically like a haunted house, but Goosebumps themed, and there was a section where you could go in for adults and a section for kids. One was more horror-oriented, one a little more comedic. Either way, fans thought it was so cool, it's scary. Then in 2015, the media circus would go around as Goosebumps the movie was released. Having a premiere in California, the movie was the best movie to open in October since Bride of Chucky. And with the Goosebumps series gaining more fans, more games would be released. A, one being a point-and-click adventure based on the movie, and another being Goosebumps Dead of Night, a augmented reality horror game based on the movie. Soon though, in 2019, we'd get a new chapter in the Goosebumps series. Goosebumps, Slappy World. With Slappy World being released, we come full circle to a new era of Goosebumps. The series we loved, we laughed at, we cried, we treasured. There will never be another series like Goosebumps in this world. For what it means to all the fans, to the merchandise, to the huge fandom. Which leads me into the newest part of the Goosebumps saga. In early 2021, it was teased that we would get a new Goosebumps series on Disney+. And as time goes on, we keep getting more updates. In fact, recently it was updated that the filming began in 2022 and will end in March of this year, 2023. I have huge hopes for this series, although word has spread that it will not have anything to do with R.L. Stein. However, I still hold hope that the series will be able to have us relive the nostalgia and outright awesomeness of Goosebumps. With the series not really having much known, except for who is going to be starring in it, and the fact that it's going to air on Disney+, Plus, we will just have to wait and see. I know the original Goosebumps TV series, which was on Netflix starting in 2015, 
is no longer on Netflix. But here's hoping that they bring the original TV series to Disney Plus, as it would make many fans be able to show their children a show that absolutely shaped how we were. With hope for a better future and prayers that the series will be able to be revived, I'm holding out hope. Hope for Goosebumps. I'm Nate Adami. This has been Goosebumps. Ning, the middle, and the twist. Thank you for watching.